Michigan State, I don't know exactly what to make of this team, right? I, I think I think Michigan State was a year early last year, but at the same time, like they just hit on everything in the transfer portal, right? They went eleven and two last year. Let's pull up the stats. Uh, went eleven and two last year. Um, Post game win expectancy though said eight point three six and three point six four. So really, instead of ten and two in the regular season. The stats would tell you this was closer to an 8-4 and four team on the other side. And now, projected SP Plus this year actually has them at 8-4. and four. We'll get to my projection here in just a minute. But you got 39, uh, sorry, sorry, 70% returning production, on uh, not on offense, for the whole team. Let me get my thoughts straight here. 70% returning production, that's number 39 in the country overall on the team. 69% returning production on offense, that's number 52 72% on defense. That's number 31. So you've got some guys that have been in the system that understand what's going on, and yet they went out and brought in a whole new slew of transfers. Uh, some big guys that I think are going to be really successful. Uh, the offensive coordinator is Jay Johnson. They are replacing Kenneth Walker the third. He was a huge portion of their offense last year. Um, but, uh, you know, replacing him is going to be tough. But you went out and you got Wisconsin transfer, uh, let's see, Berger. You got uh, Colorado transfer, Broussard. Those guys have obvious talent. They could certainly come in and do what Kenneth Walker III did. Now, you've also got the quarterback, Thorne, back. You got the wide receiver, Reed. They're back along with six offensive linemen that played at least 150 snaps last year. Like, how big of a loss is Naylor, uh, Hayward, and the three offensive linemen? That's going to be your question on offense. I, I don't think the offense was that good last year. They weren't super efficient. They were number 46 in PPA per drive, number 66 in rushing success rate, number 65 in passing success rate. You know, I, they they were they were good. They were just good. Like they didn't beat themselves a lot. Turnover margin was number 43. They were they were okay. So, you know, like it, it, it's such a weird thing to look at. Uh, moving over to the defense, defense coordinator Scotty, ha uh, Scotty Hazelton. The defensive line was good, but they're losing the defensive ends, uh, Panasiuk and Beasley. And I hope I said that name right. If I said it wrong, correct me in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts on on my preview here. Uh, I want to know about the secondary. Like they were number one hundred four in passing success rate last year, number seventy three in passing PPA. All five starters are back in the secondary. Are they are they going to be improved going up against you know a passing attack like Ohio State's like Purdue's etc. I mean those granted they don't have to play Purdue again. I just somebody is going to be able to throw the ball on you outside of Ohio State, and when that happens, do do you have the dudes right? Um, I'm not I'm not totally certain. I mean in in week three at Washington. I mean, they could be in trouble there with Kalen DeBoer's offense if they can't stop the air game. Uh, they're returning 9 of 12 that played 400-plus snaps. They bring in transfer linebackers, Winman from UNLV, uh, Brule from Mississippi State, and the cornerback Speed out of Georgia. Uh, are these guys improvements? I, I mean, we'll see. We'll see exactly what happens here. This team is a projected favorite in seven games, and yet on their 12-game schedule, they've got eight toss-ups. Again, if you're only listening to this segment, toss-up for me is any game that is decided or projected to be decided by eight points or less, one way or the other. So a one-score game is a toss-up in my eyes. Uh, they got eight of them. Eight of them. Just ridiculous. The win total here is seven and a half, juiced to the over at minus 120, so they think it's more likely that this team will go eight and four. Uh, keys to the season. Was last year a blip, or was it actual sustainable growth? Uh, the win total was four and a half. They went 10 and two in the regular season. They were 4-0 and in one-score games. I don't expect that to be the case this year. Um, I, I brought up uh, post-game win expectancy, 8.36 in the regular season. I mean, it does make you question a little bit. Um, my other question here, will the transfers hit again? Like, what is a reasonable expectation for Mel Tucker? Is eight wins good? Like, would fans be happy with seven wins at this point? I mean, they won 11 last year. You don't normally like to see a team go backwards. So I'm curious. I just I want to know what to what the expectation is in East Lansing. That's what I want to know. I've got them going eight and four. 
Uh, I've got four losses in the middle of the of the schedule, but at the same time, like I just I, I'd see eight wins somewhere on there. So I think eight and four is totally reasonable. Don't think they're going to win the division. Don't think they're going to win the conference. Obviously, but I do think that this is Mel Tucker's building something here. And so, <laughs> what's what's the tweet right now? Tuck coming. Yeah, he's he's doing some some pretty big things. So I, you know. I would love to see what uh, what the next step is. That's what I want to see. I want to see is is Thorn awesome? Is Jaden Reed awesome? Like is this offense awesome even without Kenneth Walker the third? That's my that's my question going into this season. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.